video. Hi, Victor. How are you? Hey, Marjorie. Great uh, to see you again. Nice to have you back uh, on the channel. <laughs> so, Thank you for having me. Yeah. So today we will talk about MSM. Uh, so I have a few questions for you about MSM. And I know you, uh, I mean, that's a subject that you know very well. So, yeah, we can start uh, with that. So, well, first, maybe you can um, introduce yourself again, you know, for uh, the people who didn't watch uh, our previous videos. Uh, sure. Uh, real quick. So my name is Victor Cazetto. I have my Vitagenics, Vitagenics uh, website, group, etc. Lots of YouTube videos. I'm a wise traditions nutritionist and a holistic healer. I got a background in a lot of different things, computer scientists, etc., I uh, love quantum physics, quantum biology, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, go watch Marjo's other videos with me and her, and you can get other intros, I guess. Um, yeah, we, we did a video about magnesium. We did a video about uh, colloidal silver on your channel. Uh, we mm -hmm. did a video about kefir, and now this video about MSM. So right. those are the other videos they can uh, watch if they want to know more about you and your knowledge. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so let's start with MSM. So uh, what is MSM um, basically and what does it mean? Yeah, so it's a very, very simple, uh, some people say like organic sulfur, very simple, small molecule. It's like one atom of sulf sulfur and a couple of carbons and a bunch of hydrogen. That's it. It's got two methyl groups attached to the sulfur. Uh, which is really good for methylation. So MSM, you'll find it on a lot of the joint supplements like glucosamine and chondroitin and MSM maybe in small print together. So it's actually very, very common, but people don't realize it. It's the methyl sulfonyl sulfate or something. I actually, yeah, it's a complicated actually name. forgot. Yeah, yeah uh, methyl sulfonyl methane actually, but nobody says that. So um, yeah, MSM. So it's yeah. just a natural uh, like form of sulfur? Yes, right, exactly. So it's actually produced in the ocean and then gets basically into everything through the rainfall. And so humans would naturally be consuming tons of MSM. Uh, but of course, we don't eat out in the wild anymore. So we are... I don't want to say deficient in MSM, but that was a huge resource of sulfur for us. And sulfur is very important. And MSM is easily destroyed. So in the in all of our processing, cleaning, cooking, we basically destroy the MSM. So we're not getting it. If, if you eat a lot of raw uh, foods that you are actually harvesting, you're going to get more MSM. Um, but I'm not really promoting a raw food diet because you have other issues with that but um yeah so again right we just it's natural for us to get it if we are living in a natural state and since we're not in a natural state i suggest everybody supplement with msm so you're saying in nature where do we find msm so you said in nature we find it in in the oceans uh but do you right find it, so you find it in food like in plant food in animal foods or Yes. Yeah, so it's highly concentrated. Um, so it's actually like on the, it would be like on the surface of everything through the rainfall and the plants actually absorb a lot of MSM. The animals then consume those plants, but because of the way we process, we, yeah. we destroy So we wash off or destroy all the surface MSM, any MSM that is still on the surface of any plants that we might be consuming. And then cooking and other processing is going to further destroy MSM. And yeah, so but, we, we but yeah. for, for someone who consume like uh, raw vegetables and raw meat, they would have more MSM than people who. Yeah, consume. you right. So presumably they would, but right, we don't. It depends where your raw vegetable is coming from, right? Okay. So it, it's you know, so we, we have questionable quality of our food sources, but yeah, ideally that's humans got a lot of MSM by just eating. Their wild food. Magnesium and, so, and MSM are the two things I think we really need to supplement. Is there a, like a recommendation for you know people who have specific diseases, for example, who could uh, benefit, mm -hmm. uh, who could really benefit uh, from taking MSM? Yeah, so I think every person, whether they have any disease or no disease, 
uh, for one simple reason, we are made of, uh, we need a lot of sulfur, right? To rebuild all our tissues. And so you probably don't have enough bioavailable sulfur. And that, that's one of the things. So you need the sulfur to just rebuild your tissues constantly, whether you're healing or not. And then it helps with methylation, which is one of the, you know, very important metabolic process to help, you know, rebuild your DNA, et cetera. So if you are trying to heal, if you're, whether it's a physical injury or a gut injury or something, you need to rebuild even more tissue. And so you need MSM. Like a lot of people are familiar with things like, okay, I need more collagen, you know, to, to rebuild my tissues, but MSM is a precursor to that. Or I need more uh, glutathione to help protect me. But sulfur is the limiting factor for producing that. And you can't actually absorb glutathione well by trying to ingest supplements. So if you want more glutathione, consume more MSM, actually. And your body can produce it more naturally. Uh, so... So I, I will ask again, like kind of the same question, like can't we get it through food? Because like there are many foods that are rich in sulfur, like uh, garlic, onions, uh, you know, broccoli, these types mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, even in, in animal food, you know, like just in meat or in, in eggs, you have lots of sulfur. So, uh, right. you know, do you think we could get enough MSM just by having a diet where you eat raw onions, raw garlic, um, raw liver, raw, mm. uh, what else, raw eggs, right. you know, would, would that right. be you'll get, you'll get sulfur, but you'll get different sulfur compounds. So the, and the, you know, like, like some people will say, oh, I'm, I'm allergic to sulfur, which is, it, you know, the, the words are not correct because nobody can be allergic to sulfur, but they are allergic to sulfur, different sulfur compounds. And so MSM is actually a solution for that. So you can get sulfur, and I definitely encourage eating lots of eggs. And um, for people that can handle cruciferous vegetables, that's great for sulfur. But MSM is so much more important than just the sulfur. So one, like methylation, a lot of people have metabolic issues, all different kinds of metabolic syndromes. And MSM is fantastic for that. And it's fantastic for helping you with detoxing and absorbing nutrition because it increases cell permeability. So it's sometimes called, we, we, people refer to it as a carrier, like it could carry nutrients into your body or it could carry out toxins. So you can absorb and detox with a lot less energy and you can do it much more efficiently. You'll get penetration of things. For example, when you mix MSM with magnesium oil on the skin, that's actually gonna help the magnesium oil penetrate better through the skin layers. So there, there are a lot of different reasons to take the MSM. It's not, not only for the sulfur itself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's because I always prefer to get anything from food rather than from supplements. So yeah. I'm trying to find a, a way, you know, to have maybe enough MSM without having to supplement, but um, right. yeah. So from my, uh, what I understand, it's, it's not sufficient anyway with, you know, the food we can get. Okay. Right. Um, so you said like for people with gut health, it would be especially interesting. Uh, yes. And also for, for people with uh, histamine intolerance, uh, apparently you said uh, yes. many times in your group uh, that, uh, and, and on your channel, that it can really help people with uh, histamine intolerance. Uh, right. Can you maybe explain how and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how much it can help them? Right. So MSM can dramatically help people with histamine intolerance for a few different reasons. And, you know, the, so histamine intolerance has different root causes. So whether it's because of the mast cell activation syndrome, or it's because your gut is producing too much histamine, or your liver is not taking out the histamine fast enough, MSM will help all of those. And one simple reason is because of what I mentioned before with the ability, it, it, it enables the cells to release histamine faster and easier with less energy. So your, your body's able to detox more easily. So even if there's too much histamine moving around and your body, your liver is not cleaning it out or you're producing too much or there's too much in the food, 
the MSM alone enables that histamine to move out of the way more quickly. And then in addition, the MSM is helping with methylation, which again is improving your ability to metabolize things. Okay. And so it's, it's pretty profound. About 80% of people will feel immediate uh, profound effects and reductions of like, like hay fever, like extreme hay fever can be shut down in an instant because mm -hmm. you can spray it topically. You can consume it. Yeah. You can do, you know, on, on skin rashes, you know, your eyes, your whatever up your nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can reduce snoring by doing that too. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. So there's, mm. and, and you said, so uh, MSM can be found in supplements for, Uh, uh, like for joints, like joint supplements. So it's, it's good for right. people with joint, you know, pain, stuff like that. Yes. Yes. Arthritis, any kind of joint pain. And there's a couple of reasons there too. So one, like for like, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, where your, your cartilage has been destroyed. You know, if you, you want to rebuild or, or strengthen or maintain the cartilage in your joints, you know, we'll talk about, again about collagen and the glucosamine, et cetera. But MSN again, MSM is, again, one of the limiting factors in our ability to do that. So you can regrow your cartilage better if you've got enough bioavailable sulfur, right? So it's this idea that the, the sulfur in the MSM is very highly bioavailable, very mobile, right? So your body is able to get it and use it where it needs it. Okay. And um, yeah, so there's a type of uh, antibiotics um, that is called, uh, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in English, it's fluoroquinolones. And it's like, um, well, a few years ago, they said it was like a, the, the last type of antibiotics they, you know, invented or whatever. So maybe now they invented even worse uh, antibiotics. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, so at the time sure. when it uh, came out, uh, they said, like it's it's the kind of antibiotic that you lose you you use uh, at the last resort uh, if other regular uh, antibiotics didn't work uh, they mm. would use these ones um, and why it would be the last resort is because they have horrible side effects uh, they destroy mm. the tendons and and the joints of people who take them Uh, so, um, for, for people who unfortunately took these antibiotics, do you think, and, and who now have problems, you know, with their tendons and, mm. and their joints, do you think, uh, MSN could help them, uh, repair their joints? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a, there's another really interesting thing about the MSM, uh, again, right. We, so we would even recommend like the the standard joint supplements, you know, with the chondroitin, et cetera, um, and glucosamine. But with MSM, you could go to much higher doses. Okay. So you're able to provide your body a lot more of that healing support. And it's cheap to do. It's, you know, it's a really quite a cheap supplement to get. So, yeah. So how about the dosage? Uh, like how much MSM would you recommend and for what type of condition, for example? Yeah. So I would, tell anybody to start off with like the recommended dosages, which are like, they'll typically be like three grams a day or something or three uh, capsules, so to say, mm -hmm. but you can go up to like three tablespoons of a day with no problem. And there are studies out there that show uh, people and animals that use far more than that with no negative side effect that I, I, I don't think it's necessary to promote anything reckless But we know lots of people, uh, including even in, right, the, the people that we work with, that go up to pretty high doses, probably as high, building up to, gradually building up to maybe a few tablespoons a day for people that have severe healing issues. Um, and like I, I myself, for example, years ago, when I ended up, finally ended up with like leaky gut and I suddenly got crazy hay fever. And during the peak days, I would be taking like, um, I'm not even sure. I was taking like two capsules, like every hour or two or something, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had no problem taking 10 grams, 20 grams in a day to oh. just keep, just completely shut down. And then it was like normal. After mm -hmm. a, a couple of hours, I start to feel like the histamine reaction, take the MSM and it would just totally eliminate it. 
like if you take the recommended dosage and you don't feel any difference, that's when you ramp it up. Yeah, take right, exactly. Take more, right? Mm -hmm. And especially for people with joint issues, I would encourage them to try to take more because it's the it's like one of the cheapest, most powerful things you have to to amp up your healing, to increase your your healing potential. I like mm -hmm. to mix it with vitamin C, I like to mix it with colloidal silver. There, there are, there's a very, very small percentage of people where MSM could have, uh, make them feel worse, not, not for joint pain, but they could feel worse because they, uh, if for certain genetic factors combined with a deficiency in vitamin B or combined with like too many oxalates in the diet, there's a couple of like, if you have all the wrong things line up, you might be someone that's like an over methylator. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's a, like a rare combination of things that can make you feel bad when you take MSM and we see, but it's not going to kill you because you're just not, you're going to feel lousy and you're going to stop. But if you're not feeling bad, you're just going to notice you feel better. Cool. And uh, so uh, would you recommend any brand in particular of MSM? Not, not really. Um, I tend to use Doctors Best or Now or but any trusted brand. You'll also see like um, a, a lot of the brands will say Opti MSM, yeah. which is right, which is actually like, you know, it's a well-known, well-studied um, manufactured MSM. You'll see others that advertise 100% natural, pure MSM. But I, I don't really see an advantage there. And those might be much more expensive. Now, you know, nor normally I'll like, you know, I have videos and stuff and I'll tell people never get anything synthetic or artificial because we have problems with isomers, et cetera. But with MSM, we don't have that issue. So if it's trusted and it doesn't have other garbage added to it, fillers, I try to tell people, try not to get tablets. It's better to get powder or capsules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and um, on the contrary of magnesium oil, that is better not used on the face. Uh, MSM, right. MSM, yes, can be used on the on the face very safely, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's a good to point out. Yeah, you don't want to spray your face with yeah, magnesium oil. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I've seen I've seen several people after our video about uh, mm. magnesium oil who tried to spray it on their face and they right. got issues. You know, they they got rashes or you know. Um, right. Uh, like spots like acne and stuff like that but right. yeah uh, magnesium oil is not a good idea to uh, use on the face but right. msm is very safe like <clears throat> it won't irritate your skin on the contrary right right on the contrary exactly it's soothing and i have a, a last question uh it's about nas uh, and acetylcysteine so that's something i've been recommending uh mm -hmm on my channel for my protocol uh because nas is so it's, it's a type of uh, sulfur supplement uh, also. That's why I'm, I'm making the parallel maybe with MSM, but you will tell me if I'm wrong of uh, mm -hmm. making this parallel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've been recommending NAS mainly because uh, it's a biofilm breaker and, uh, you know, to reach Candida with uh, the other remedies I detail uh, in my videos. So NAS was one of the biofilm breakers I was recommending with enzymes. Um, and also NAS is supposed to, you know, uh, help the liver, like to support the liver. So um, I know that you don't love NAS, uh, but can right. you maybe explain why you prefer MSM or can you even compare both or are, are they yeah. really different? Yeah, no, they're, they're comparable in many. Uh, so the, the power of uh, the, the acetylcysteine is very similar providing the sulfur. So there's a lot of similarities between that, but, but NAC is actually an artificial thing, okay. right? So that's, a, that's, a, I mean, not only that it is also manufactured, but it's not found in nature. So acetyl, acetylcysteine is found in nature, but this is like, it's kind of like an, it is, it's an artificial amino acid, or it's being used as a transport, as a transport mechanism to provide us with acetylcysteine. So the NAC is considered a drug, actually, even though it's a supplement. But if we actually like look into it, we'll see that, yeah, this, it, it doesn't really exist in nature. You can't get NAC from food. Mm -hmm. So um, while it's comparable to MSM, for me, MSM is just much, much safer. And I can use it again with like dosages and stuff. I can go crazy with MSM. 
and I don't have to worry. And so I, I tend to gravitate towards those things that are like ultra safe. Okay. That's why I love the colloidal silver too. Right. Um, yeah. But and MSM, so MSM doesn't have like the biofilm breaker effect that NAS has. Or um, well, it, it could, it depends what you combine it with. Right. So it's going to have a similar effect. In fact, I would say MSM is superior for the gut. It, they're a little bit different because MSM is fantastic for your mucosal lining also. It will coat. If you take enough MSM, it will start to coat your mucosal lining. And then it's going to start to catch more pathogens because of that. It's going to empower your mucosal lining. And of course, and this is really great for the gut. And for the, it's not directly doing biofilm busting, but I prefer other things for the biofilms anyway. So for me, I definitely do appreciate NAC. I like it. Um, I like it more like uh, for like a severe issues with liver, you know, for like more immediate liver support. I like mm -hmm. that aspect of it. But generally speaking, I really don't, I don't really use it or recommend it myself because I'm, I'm a little bit more hesitant about it. Okay. Right. So, and it, it's good short term usage. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. I, I, I would, I would, yeah. You continue to recommend NAS mainly mm -hmm. for the biofilm breaker effect. Um, yeah. As I said, I use this one and enzymes, and I know that you like PBX for that too. So we, we will talk about that in a, mm -hmm. another video. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess I would still recommend NAS, you know, short term, like uh, yeah. in my protocol, like for phase one, that's not, no longer than one month. And that's it. And because right. I agree with you, I, I'm the same. I don't like uh, artificial stuff, and mm. I prefer when it's when it's more natural, when it comes from nature. So I agree mm. with you that uh, I I I would prefer MSM that is more natural. But yeah, for for the biofilm breaker, um, so far I've, I've I've read several studies that really made me like M uh, NAS for that. But mm. yeah, short term, and then. Uh, and then maybe switch to MSM or, or maybe what do you think? Like uh, in my protocol, you, you can take both like MSM and NAS. Yeah, I don't see an issue. I don't even see why you can't take them both together. Right. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. So I'm not against it. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not against it at all. I think NAC is pretty cool. It's pretty cool okay. stuff. And, and so would you take MSM like every day for the rest of your life or would you? Yeah. Would you use it like maybe one month and then take a break of one week and then again? Or how, how would you use MSM? Yeah, I mean, I that's what I do. I take it all the time. Um, I well, think it's good. You never take a yeah. break? Well, you know what? I So I take a break from everything accidentally because I'm lazy. Okay. And so I do think it's good for, because as a human, we would, yeah. we would sometimes, I'm, MSM is one of those things where it would be difficult to reduce in, in a natural state, it would be very difficult to reduce our exposure okay. because we would be living around it. Um, so I think we should attempt to have it all the time, but yeah, for sure. It's always good to take breaks. I mean, short breaks, um, but MSM, I, I can't find a reason not to take it every day. Okay. Right. So okay, that's... and just one last question. Normally, this mm. is the one, the last one, because I've I've been saying it's the last one for like two or three questions. <laughs> Sorry, it's my uh, fault. Too. No, no, it's my fault. So um, the MSM that we buy in powders, how do they make it? How because you say it's natural, so do they extract it from somewhere, or do they make it in a lab from some kind of fermentation or whatever? Yeah, there's two different ways. So there's the, like the Opti MSM, which is some kind of manufacturing process that I'm not, I'm not intimate with exactly how they, they produce it, right, through a manufacturer. So this standardized manufacturing process. Uh, and then there are others that actually do extract it, which would mean they're extracting it either from the ocean or from rainwater. And I don't know, I don't know exactly that process either. Um, so when I... I can't remember how many years ago when I started really getting into MSM and I started trying to look and configure uh, and, and figure out if there, if it really mattered, you know, like, Oh, uh, should I, should I really just try to get these naturally harvested MSM, mm. you know, and I could never find 
any reason to focus oh, yeah. on that. So okay. it's one of the one of the rare manufactured things um, that I'm I'm comfortable with. It seems when you buy your MSM, you don't. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, right, mean, my yours. mine's always. Yeah, yeah, it's always the manufactured one. Actually, the okay. Opti MSM. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Victor. I think uh, I've asked all of my yeah. questions. So uh, yeah, and if people have more questions, they can uh, go on your channel. You have a, a very detailed video about MSM. They can uh, ask the questions under this video and uh, they can also join you on your Facebook group, uh, Vitagenix, or also on my Facebook group, uh, The Candida Slayer. And uh, yeah, okay. Thank cool. you, Victor, and I see you, uh, you. soon in another video, uh, maybe about PBX. Sounds awesome. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, we definitely covered some unique things that are I don't mention even in my own video. So that's kind of cool. cool. Yeah, your questions always pull out a little additional information. So that's cool. Great. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Victor. Bye-bye. Ciao. All right. Ciao.